Hello, people of the interwebs. Welcome back to my let's play of Threads of Fate, or a Gogni card, where they go against someone cares about. I am Wonder Girl 108. Um, this is the episode in which this game really gets real. I'm actually kind of nervous uh, about doing this. Um, not, not because I don't know how the game works, but just because I'm nervous about making it into a good video, I guess. Uh... Hello. Okay, yes, we- okay, we, we talked to Klaus, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit- uh, I'm a bit on edge here. Uh, and I'm worried about making noise and disturbing neighbors. Because the walls here are stupid thin. Yeah, so let's do this. Yep, yep, we're ready. Oh, poor Klaus. You're gonna be waiting a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so minor spoiler alert, as you're about to see. Um, we're about at the halfway point in this game right now. But how can that be? Well, let's go find out. <laughs> as always, not gonna voice act. Um, I don't trust my voice, especially right now, so enjoy and read, please. Can I also comment on how I do like that the sprite for Prima Doll changes every time we get something new for him? Like, now you can see the amulet. It's there. I really like it. I, it seems like it should be a really obvious thing, but I mean... For the PS1, 2000, the year 2000, I mean, it's really nice attention to detail. They put details in the right places, as I've been trying to say. Anyway. I would say, how would you know? But to be fair, he was designed to do something at a place that's in the middle of a lake. So presumably, to serve his purpose, he would have to go on a boat at some point. Um, so that's probably why. <laughs> oh, <coughs> no, he's not deaf, but he is a doll. And I'm, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm seriously wondering right now if I'm reading too much into this, first of all, but I'm also wondering... Is he pre-programmed to think that whatever will take him to the lake ruins is a boat? So he can't comprehend that it's not a boat. I mean, presumably Grand Magician Elroy wouldn't have known that there would be something besides a boat that could take a person to the lake ruins anyway. Um, but I'm, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably reading too much of it. Let's, let's go, let's go. This bonding moment between them. <laughs> also, that gesture Prim is doing, what the heck is it? Like, he's probably like waving his hands in the air, but the thing isn't moving yet. So, whatever. <laughs> and I do, uh, I, I, I'm sorry I keep stopping, but like, I do like how the text is slightly smaller to indicate distance that she's hearing him from far away. It's really neat. Everything about this game is neat, okay? I love this game to death. Um, let's get into the really good part. Or the really bad part, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Not sure why we had the option to cancel that text box when it was just gonna cancel on us anyway. But whatever. So 
has a tongue and can feel pain in biting his tongue. Actually, he can bite his tongue. Let's just throw that out there. I don't know what about transferring from the from the f sound to the ooh sound would cause a person to bite their tongue because that's not a point in which you close your mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just phonetically speaking. I don't know if phonetically is the right word. I'm, I'm trying too hard to sound like I know what I'm talking about. I should shut up. This is the ruins. It's just this. There are no words. <laughs> this is a plot twist I don't think anyone sees coming. Or maybe they do. Hmm. Here's another- I just realized this. Here's another interesting uh, appearance of the word duty. Sacred duty. Huh. I wonder if that was- I wonder if that's just a coincidence or if that's actually part of the theme. <laughs> to be fair, I am surprised she doesn't know this considering she grew up there. Like, I mean, there's not paying attention in class and stuff and like to her parents and everything. Though apparently she did when she was younger. But, like, if this is what the East Heaven Kingdom is for, how, how, and she lived there most of her life, how does she not know this? Seriously. I'm sorry, my cat seems to have lost something under the stove. Anyway. <laughs> I love I love Maya's gestures just that oh <laughs> Again, how does she not know this? I'm interested that he 
he's actually bothering to say this, although I guess he could just be saying it for appearances. Your power, not the power of the relic that you have. Now here's something else interesting. I'm sorry I keep interrupting, but I mean, there's so much to say and I, I don't want to skip any of the things I can say. Anyway, remember that dream that Nightmare Mint had? about, um, everyone in the kingdom calling her an ex-princess. Um, that never happened in real life, and yet, that's actually what's happening in real life. So was that dream... I feel like there was more to that dream than there should be, basically. Sorry, I will comment again here. I'm sorry! Um... I don't think... Like... I see where Maya's coming from in saying this. Like, I, I understand what she means, but... I think princess is... Because princess simply means she's the daughter of a king. Like, that's literally all it means. I don't think she's no longer the king's daughter unless he disowned her, which we know he did not. Or we will know. Well, it's heavily implied by the ending of Mint's story. Um, <laughs> but, so yeah, no, she's not an ex-princess. She's still a princess. She just doesn't act like one. To be fair, Mint has learned more magic since she left home. Maya has done squat, as you'll see. Like, Mint's magic still isn't able to counter a relic, but still. Also, I kind of have to wonder, her dual halos, are they not... I mean, they're a magical tool. Are they a relic, or were they made just for her? Okay. Sorry, my cat wants to play fetch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, try to keep the noise down, because this is... Yeah, I, honestly, the pumpkin thing is a cheap trick. Like, seriously. Using a relic just to turn the thing your sister hates most into a living thing. Isn't that kind of flippant use of an ancient magical tool? Don't you think? Anyway. Sorry about that. And I'm surprised he's saying this, too. Unless he knew she'd say no.
Hello, typo. That won't be necessary. Never seen that before in my life. Considering how many times I've played this game, that's kind of surprising. I guess that explains how it got missed, if I've missed it so many times, and I'm such a stickler for grammar. Uh, anyway. appears to know Rue. How interesting. Also, this is my favorite track in the game. It's called A Chance Meeting, which I really don't think does it justice. I've always called it the Song of Justice, just because it sounds so epic, and it's such a perfect, like, fight theme. It fills me with determination. <laughs> That was pretty badass. So they leave mint behind. That's kind of mean. She's been struggling this whole time, mind you. I've been kind of mean by taking so long. <laughs> planning to ruin her life, though, I guess, to be fair, again, she already ruined yours. But that doesn't mean that she would let you ruin hers in return. That's not what people do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Notice her hoops are gone, um, which makes me wonder. I mean, we already know that apparently the magic in her dual halos is like a physical thing. Like, you can pick it up and find it and, I guess, put it into them? I guess? But does she not know any magic of her own? Like, of her own making and use? Because it seems like the Kingdom of Sorcery would be about people being able to cast spells on their own, you know? Anyway, we can look around. Um, um, 
checking this, what I assume is meant to be, I don't know, a toilet? A prison toilet? I, I don't know. Um, that will end this, but we can also... I don't know if she was actually hitting the bar, because that's kind of stupid. The, that you can check the, the bars on both sides. I know it took me a while. I know I didn't know that for a long time. Um, anyway. watching thus far for some reason, and you feel like it, I would like a discussion in the comments, is Maya wrong about this? That Mint would have begun a reign of terror which would have ended in oblivion. Because, like, as I've been saying, Mint isn't evil, she's just selfish. But, through sheer neglect alone, I think, she could end up doing that to the world, or would she... Would she like her power so much that she would use it? And what would she use it for? Like, what would she do once she owns the world, apart from torment her sister? Because, here, here's another thing. It's always a, a common th plot in all kinds of stories of, you know, I want to take over the world. Okay, and then what? Because <laughs> the world is a big frickin' place, and presumably the world of this game is as well. Maybe not as big, possibly, but still a big place. And to be in charge of everyone and everything? There, there aren't enough hours in the day for one person to do that. Ever. So... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> would she have enough power to begin a reign of terror which would have been in oblivion? Would someone assassinate her? Just, I, I, I think what would happen if Mint took over the world is something... I'd like to see theorizing about this, basically. Um, probably won't happen here, this being a, basically an undead channel, but, you know. Notice also that her angry, you know, swiper dual halos gesture is still happening even though she doesn't have them. Again, preset gestures that indicate something. It's always clear what it indicates in any given situation. To be fair, she can't beat you with her magic either because you're a cheater. You give it to her anyway! You cheating cheater who cheats? Seriously, using a relic is cheating. The only reason Mint's justified in wanting to use a relic against Maya is that she has no other options. Cause like, the Aeons were these like super powerful not- like, they, they weren't even humans. They were like, demigods. And the, the, these tools that they made are powerful beyond any mortal comprehension. So how is using one any kind of fair? Agreed. Okay, that's a bit- that's a bit much. Being afraid of what Mint will do if she takes over the world, that's one thing. This? This is crossing a line. Just saying. Where's that 
word duty again. I'm not sure. It, minor spoiler here. This might not actually be Maya. It, it, it sounded like her for the most part until the very end there, but... It, this might not actually be her. Um, it's never made clear exactly... Yeah. Remember that. One more question. There's strongly disliking a certain kind of food, and then there's being physically unable to eat it. I think if it's literally the only thing you can eat, you would eat it anyway, unless you're, like, allergic. Which maybe she is. Um, her hatred for pumpkins is never explained. I don't know if it's a Japanese thing or a... a I, I, I'd like to think it's something else entirely, but I, I don't... It's never really explained, and its extent is never really explained either. How did he open it as a porcupine? Just saying. So yeah, plot twist. <laughs> That was cool, I gotta say. I mean, it was her it was her startled gesture, but like the and the little cloud of smoke was a nice touch. Again, details where they matter. How are we supposed to get across? Oh look, she's doing her hoop twirling thing without a hoop. I guess that's what she does when she's thinking. Strange she doesn't do it very often. Hmm. <laughs> How are we supposed to get across? Um, I'm gonna have to save that for the next episode, because this one's getting kind of long, actually. So, yeah, like I said, things just got real. And they're about to get even more real every minute from now on. So, yeah. 
Thank you so very much for watching. If you did, it's my pleasure to share this with anyone at all who would bother with me. And I look forward to seeing you next time.